learning how to press, learning how to pray through, learning how to surrender, learning how to give up their will, and learning how to deny themselves and prepare themselves to take up their cross. So, at a time when we should be earnest in prayer and we should be surrendering we should, to the will of God and doing the will of God, many in this hour are asleep. And I believe we're in that hour. I believe we're in that time. We're in the Garden of Gethsemane, as it were, in the Spirit. That's where the Holy Ghost is leading us. We've all got to come to that place of crushing. We've all got to cut. Every one of us must come to Gethsemane spiritually by faith. We all must come to this place where we surrender our will. Amen. And that will must be relinquished. That will must be released. You cannot do the will of God with your own will. Your will can't do the will of God. Your will must be relinquished. Your will must be released. And God's will replaces your will. Now, understand this. If you read the scriptures, you'll understand that the promises of God, you'll understand that everything God has made available to those that do His will. It all comes down to doing the will of the Father. Jesus said, many will say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, haven't we done all these wonderful things? We cast out devils in your name. We sat in your presence. We drank in your presence. And he will say and profess unto them, I never knew you. you he, he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. These are the ones that said, they thought they, they, that Jesus knew them. They thought that they knew Jesus. Understand, Jesus said, Only those that do the will of my Father which is in heaven shall enter into the kingdom. Jesus did not come to do his own will. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. He said, As I hear, I judge. Brothers and sisters, understand, it's not an option to do the will of the Father. It is a requirement. You cannot do your own will and enter into life. You must deny yourself. You must deny your will. Your will must be removed and God's will must take that place. You must come. I must come to that place called Gethsemane, to that place of crushing, to that place of the olive press, to that place. Oh, I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, we must come to that place where we're pressed beyond measure. We must come to that place where we cry out. I don't know how many times in, this, in the time I've been in the ministry and how, how, how much time in this training process while I've been trained to do the will of God, to obey God, how many times I've had to pray that prayer when I just could not go another step, I'd have to pray, not my will, but thine be done. It's not just a one-time thing. It's a continual process of sanctification. We just keep on coming to this place. And then finally, we come to a place of 100%, not my will. And that's the goal. That's the high calling of God in Christ Jesus to be crucified with Christ. And it's long, no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. There are those that will attain to 30, and those that to 60, but there are some that are going to attain to a hundredfold. They gave 100%, and the Lord gave them 100%. How much are you willing to surrender? 30%? 60%? Somewhere in between 30 and 60, somewhere between uh, 1 and, and, and 10 or 20? Or are you willing to go all the way up and surrender 100% of your heart, of your will? Amen? That's what Jesus did. I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. The Lord has some sons on the earth. God the Father has some sons like his own son. 
And they are not doing their own will. They're being trained not to do their own will. They're being trained to deny themselves. They're being prepared even now to be just like Jesus. To only do what they see the Father doing. To only judge as they hear. People, the Lord has some sons that are getting ready to be revealed. All creation is groaning, travailing for that which shall be revealed in these last days, the manifestation, the unveiling of the sons of God. What's the earthquakes? What's the tornadoes? What's the commotions? What's the rumors of wars? What's uh, the roaring of the sea? What's all of this about today? What's the perplexity of nations? What is this all about? The manifestation of the sons of God. Can you imagine one Jesus, right, on the earth and how much uh, uproar there was because of one, just because of one vessel full of the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Could you imagine more vessels on the earth with the fullness? Multitudes followed Jesus. There were great uprisings. There was great tumults because of Jesus. There was strifes. Not not Jesus didn't cause those strifes. People would fight over Jesus. Literally fight over him. They would fight over the words he would say. They would fight over when he would work miracles. When those that were sick would be healed and he would cast out devils and there was strifes among them. And in this hour, there's going to be a manifestation of the power of God. There's going to be a manifestation of God's kingdom, of God's goodness, of God's glory. And there will be strifes, and there will be tumults, and there will be rioting. But understand, it's only because God Almighty is manifesting forth His glory in the midst of a wicked and a perverse generation and a generation that is faithless. The Lord has some sons walking in the fullness of the Holy Ghost, even as Jesus Christ in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The fullness of God was in Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ was the expressed image of the Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ has some brothers. He's got some fathers, got some sons that are going to be the very expressed image of their Father. Oh, praise God. This is the true gospel. This is the true gospel and the true light that lighteth the world. And those that are attaining and those that are measuring up to the fullness of Christ, they will not be conferring with flesh and blood. They're not servants of man. They're not men pleasers. Like Jesus said, I I come to do thy will, O God. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I come to do thy will, O God. Jesus did nothing of himself. He was 100% submitted to the will of the Father. And I've heard people say that Jesus was praying in the garden, not my will, but thine be done, because he didn't want to go to the cross. He didn't want to suffer. That's not why Jesus Christ prayed that prayer. Jesus did not want to see one soul lost. And he knew that judgment would be set after Gethsemane. If he prayed that prayer, he knew that if if he would have not gone to the cross, listen, he knew that once he went once he had gone to the cross, those that rejected him would spend eternity in hell. And that's what he was struggling with. He didn't want to see one soul lost. And he knew there would be those. That's what he was struggling with. That's why his sweat was at great drops of blood. Because he was making the choice. Because he was making the decision to save those that would hear the truth. Those that would accept the truth. That's what he struggled with. He wasn't struggling with what he had to endure. What he was going to go through. He was struggling with the fact that judgment would be set. And that all those that rejected the gospel and rejected the truth would spend eternity in hell and he didn't want to see one soul lost 
God is willing that none should perish, that not one soul be lost, but that all would come to repentance and accept Jesus and be saved. If people understand that's why Jesus was struggling in the garden. That's why his sweat was at great drops of blood falling down to the ground. That's why Jesus said, let this cup pass from me. Because he did not want to be the judge. He wanted to be the Savior. But God the Father committed all judgment to Jesus because he became the Savior of the world. You must understand, people, God is love. If he wasn't love, Jesus Christ never would have went to the cross. God did not spare his only son. Man likes to say, well, did the devil inspired the crucifixion in God. Listen, it pleased the father to bruise his son. Jesus was offered as a sacrifice from the father. Nobody took Jesus' life. He laid it down freely. And all those today that have this mindset that Jesus was defeated at the cross. and uh, Listen, Jesus gave his life. He laid it down of himself. He, nobody stole his life from him. Nobody made him go to Calvary. Even when they said to him, uh, Jesus said, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. And they fell backwards under the power of God. Jesus said, you, you couldn't take me right now if it, if it wasn't the will of the Father. He says, don't you know I could call the angels right now and they would deliver me. He says, but then how are the scriptures going to be fulfilled? So if you have the idea that Jesus Christ was struggling in the garden because he didn't want to suffer, then you don't understand the truth. You don't understand that God is love. And God loves you. And God doesn't want you to spend eternity in hell. And if you're going to go to hell, you're going to have to trample the blood of Jesus to get there. You're going to have to reject the love of God. You're going to have to reject the true gospel of Jesus Christ. You're going to have to reject God. You're going to have to reject his love. You're going to have to reject his provision. You're going to have to reject the sacrifice of his son. That's the only way you can spend eternity in hell is to reject the provision, God's redemptive plan. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know that this message uh, stirs up a lot of questions and, and without, you know, I don't profess to know all the answers, but um, for you that desire to uh, know more or to understand more from God's Word, um, if you have a question, leave your comment below. But listen, we don't have all the answers, but we can pray. And the Lord does speak to us, and we can get an answer. I've, I've had very few, if any, that where God did not answer me when I asked Him a question. And I found the times that He didn't answer me, it was because... In his wisdom, God knew I didn't need the answer to that question at the time. God knows us better than we know ourselves, people. He knows what we need. He knows what we don't need. Now, as a minister of the gospel, I'm going to go back and listen to this message again because there were things said in this message I didn't plan on saying, and I need to hear them again. God speaking. The Holy Ghost is speaking. God is preparing his bride is making herself ready. God bless you.